I thought I was done. I thought that I moved past, everything was good, that it was a perfectly good product. But then you commented, and you commented, and you commented all these suggestions, and I couldn't simply let them sit there and rot. So I'm back here on Infinite Parkour for the biggest upgrade I'm planning ever. So if you don't know how this works, it's exactly what you're seeing in front of you. You jump from block to block as they generate new ones and stuff flies around you, happens around you, particles, mobs, sounds, and they're just there for decoration. Your goal is to try to keep that number on the right going up. As you might have just heard, there's a firework that goes off every 25 jumps just for added celebration. But once ever you do fall off, the number on the right gets tracked, whichever one was your highest, and put on the high scoreboard. Like I said, there's settings here to turn the decorations on or off, or turn the firework as often or as little as you want. And the last few details you need to know is I made them all with these command blocks right here, and I packaged it up all into a structure block. But today, I think it is due for an upgrade. And that's the recap. If you didn't see me make the previous videos, it's totally fine. You don't need to really see those because I have to redo it all with these ideas. Here is the idea board. Everything that you guys commented, I tried to keep track of. It was tough. I basically have it divided into the gameplay ideas, the visual and aesthetic ideas, this new section called meta progression. I'll touch on that more later and all of the stupid bug fixes and quick little things things and the technical changes I need to do right here. And I just gotta get cracking on one of these. Now the ideas here in yellow were all of your ideas and then the gray ones are what I added afterwards. Some of these ideas are really big, really huge changes that I'm not sure if I'll even get to, but they're still there, still present because they're ideas. If I get to them, I get to them. If I don't, I don't. I try to credit every person who mentioned an idea. Obviously for some people, that's a lot of uh, similar ideas, so I just kind of condense those in. I also forgot to mention that some things on here have exclamation points if they're like really big ideas or some of the question marks or some ideas where I'm just not sure if I'm for or I'm a little confused on how they would work. I'll dive into that more when I get to each individual idea though. But this is kind of hard to divide up and determine what I should do. So let me do something. So I just took this and categorized it all based on color and similar ideas. You might have saw in a few of the clips before that some things started changing randomly. That's because I was recording stuff out of order. But anyway, let me break this all down. And it all is pretty much like a flow chart of how it's going to work. So obviously, this is all going to run a data pack now. I decided to make that switch. Yes, I know. They're a lot better to use just because they're more compact, they're more mobile, and it's just gonna make everything a lot better. The first thing we have to do is run some setup commands, whatever the player triggers this to be in game. My idea is you'd, cre you'd build something physically with like some gold and like a throw some item in the middle and that will trigger everything. And here's some, there's some simple fixes here, like throwing the player on a team and making any hostile mobs on the same team. Everything that used to run over here, I'm calling setup row. This will all run at the same time. This just sets up like the scoreboards and the data for everything I'll need. We'll create the lobby at the player and also sets a person in adventure mode by default. Speaking of which, here's the lobby. Everything in here includes the meta progression of, you know, your PB unlocking maybe new trails, cosmetics, music and sounds and stuff having a day night toggle is an idea I saw I came up with like the areas to change and maybe there's checkpoints and you would find this in the lobby the lobby is gonna be bigger of course and then maybe the harder jumps will be an idea that you can toggle on or off a bit of a difficulty scaling so once you've done that we're then going to tag any players that have are uh, in the parkour with a tag and these commands will just be running constantly every tick I'll make sure that they not take a fall damage and make sure they will be picking up items while they're playing. This is a small little section that's just running in the background. So once the setup really starts, there's gonna be a pressure plate in the lobby that's gonna start the game and these will get activated when that happens. First off, we're going to prevent the players from being able to add to their jump counter while within the lobby using some radius commands. Uh, we have to do everything in the setup section for the first jump, which is under this pressure plate right now, in fact. I just labeled it here, so all these commands will be running. That will set up some more things. We'll also need to save the starting position, like 
Z coordinate so that we don't clear past that point and we're going to want to clear like a big 50 by 50 by 50 void in front of the player so that there's nothing in the way in case they're not in a void world. Yeah, that's going to destroy a lot of blocks. I'm aware. I think that's just my better best solution. And so once this starts, everything down here is going to be running constantly. We're going to be checking to see if they hit that height limit or maybe near the world border, some hit decorations. I'm not entirely sold this idea because I'm not sure exactly how I would do it. But the height limit one, I know for a fact I could do. And then we're also going to be placing markers wherever the next jump is and that will be an easier way to detect when they land speaking of which the armor stand solution a lot of people were mad at me for using armor stands and instead suggested to use markers so that's what we're doing we will be replacing markers with armor stands and that will also kill this bug where the armor stands didn't start as invisible i was actually setting it afterwards that way i could toggle between the two but i understand that was I just kind of left that in and I forgot to fix it. So that's the armor stand solution. So while the game is running, here's a breakdown of everything we're going to do. So we're going to wait until fall distance, the MBT that the player has reaches zero. So this was previously represented with the scoreboard on the right. It's just the fall distance that is constantly being calculated on your player. It starts increasing once you start falling. And right now I have it so that when you get to 5,656, like you just saw, it will end the game. That's what I'm referring to. So whenever that is increasing and then hits zero, that means you landed on a block. And if they're within one of the markers that we have tagged with this deco tag, don't worry about that. We're going to run the next jump setup, which is this section. We're going to summon 180 differently rotated markers at the player, all tagged with this tag called decision. What I mean by that is that they're literally facing from this direction, all 180 degrees like this in front of the player. We're going to then tag one stand at random and we're going to mark that with make block. We're then going to randomize between a bunch of commands that use carrot notation to then place the block in front of that armor stand. If you don't know what carrot notation does, I'm going to show you. It's a set of relative commands that are all based on the direction you're facing. So I believe this is five blocks to your left. This is five blocks above you, and then the last one is five blocks in front of you. That's the most important part. It's always in front of you. No matter what direction I'm looking, I'll always be five blocks in front. So that's why carrot notation is important to use here with the commands. I'm going to make it relative to the direction of the armor stand. So then we're going to let decoration choose the block. As we see here, we're running decoration next. So this carrot notation is going to place a new marker where we want the next block. So the, what decoration is going to do is look for this new marker as tags, and we're going to randomize a block based on your current block score and then place a block at that marker. What do I mean by that? Well, there's a few different things that are going to choose between whether or not what block we place. If I'm going to be doing the new area idea, I want to have a set of blocks that are decorative per each area. And then within that, if you have a hardness difficulty turned on, we'll also throw in soul sand, fences, ice, glass panes into the mix, and they will also be randomized. We're then going to tag that marker with deco so we don't activate it again. And we're going to move on because next, we're going to randomize between a different pool to place a new effect. This is going to be particles, sound effects, mob structures, basically everything in this section of the command blocks, which is all of the decorations you saw. When we place structures, you may be wondering, well, what about the blocks? Well, you don't have to worry about that because I just added a little section over here I forgot. We're going to be clearing the blocks directly behind the player at all times. And we're going to make sure that they're past the certain Z point we mark here, but then we'll be filling exactly one block behind as they are jumping along. After decorations are done, we're then going to tag that marker with complete jump and then we're gonna wait until fall distance increases again and then repeat the previous command and keep going until the player is no longer tagged with parkour and they're gonna lose that tag once they fall below that 5656 threshold I talked about earlier so this is Connor from the future I actually forgot that I made two videos on this topic and there were some ideas from the first video that I didn't include mostly these bottom two right here and then there was another person credited on suggesting the data pack 
both of these ideas I actually did take account for in this section already. And so now they're just part of it. The idea of targeting a marker using the at random and then placing markers at the player with a bunch of different angles. Yeah, so I'm stupid. I actually forgot I made a short for the second video and an idea that came from that was to put the uh, scoreboard in the action bar. So down here, putting a little number that shows you what block you're on and that's going in the uh, visual section. Once again, I forgot to add that one so you might not see in some of the future clips. That's the whole layout of everything I'm looking to do with this game. I put your guys' ideas in the section that they belong and I'm just going to look and expand upon whatever I feel like. But of course, I'm not going to be able to target everything today. There's a lot of stuff up here. So I'm thinking of just setting up the infrastructure of like the first couple of sections and this way it's modular. That will let me add into areas that I want to later because everything is modular and hopefully with how data packs work, they could be placed in separate documents and that will prevent any interfering stuff like that it should be a lot of fun so here comes the greatest part i have to now make everything and i can't really show you because i'm just typing in a text document that's not gonna be the most interesting i'll show you a few things as i'm developing more interesting part what do i do with all of these i'm gonna keep this up for reference for now but the end goal is to replace all these command blocks with the data pack just because it'll, it'll be simpler so the first thing we have to come up with is the mechanism we use to activate everything and what i mean by that is literally this first step we need to set up the lobby and stuff like that so i'm thinking that we make the player in game just have to place like a ring of gold blocks throw a diamond inside and light it just something really random but really easy to detect because all i have to do is search every diamond that is an item that is on the ground that is on fire that has eight gold blocks around it and then we can execute the command that's going to summon everything in and i'll look into doing that so as you can see now when you do this i have made it summon in a stone block just to indicate that this method of detection is working this seems like a really simple step but everything you just missed in between was me figuring out how to set up a data pack in the first place which was a process so obviously i think what i'm going to do next is just use a structure block and take this section here the lobby part and make it spawn in relative to this area i'm not entirely sure if i should maybe just remove all of this or should i make it so the pressure plate is spawned here maybe that would make the most sense i'll try to line it up in a way that works all right here we go i set up a little thing to test this but basically the idea is of course when you create this you set it on fire and you throw your diamond in it will then place the lobby around you and i lined it up perfectly to be on this block and everything seems to work of course except the game doesn't work yet so that's our next thing is to do some setup parameters like I was talking about earlier. Basically everything in setup row needs to run uh, every time we do that. And that's just to make sure that the settings are correct have everything listed out here we have to create some scoreboard and stuff like that although i'm not sure if i want to do this just yet because there's some things that i might not need anymore but we'll get there when we come to it so i've been hard at work kind of changing some things and tweaking it as i'm starting to realize how i want to do some things so right now this spawns in now instead of teleporting to the new structure and placing it right here it's actually above me now and that's because i wanted to make a user-friendly way to kind of do this in non-void worlds so it's going to place the structure up at y level 250 now and wherever you place down your little uh, structure to summon everything in will now become the place that you can teleport from into the game the idea being that wherever you built this is somewhere that you can access a lot easier and then when you punch up here it puts you directly in i was going to add something up here to do the opposite of course where you would click it and it would teleport you back down but i would rather develop the lobby further first before doing that Another thing to note is that this is directly selective and what do I mean by that is it will prevent itself from being created again. If I do the same thing, throw the item in, we won't have another infinite parkour. I made it one per world and I think that's just 
for the best benefit. I mean, if you could just keep creating new versions of the game, they would impede each other and not work as well. The other thing I want to mention about that thing is it does say punch to play. I know that's not the best option but some people like to right click and i couldn't make it work for both interaction at entities the thing that i'm trying to use here you can see by the box are really tricky way more than i thought they should be it's weird how they work but i got them to work so that's good i might move that down a little bit make it a little wider so it covers the full text but it works in its current state of course all this other commands i was talking about earlier that sets up scoreboards stuff like that that is all also running now i don't know if i mentioned that yet you just can't see or tell because this world already has everything on it i'll be able to show you way later when i do this in a completely new world that it does set everything up i just can't right now um, another thing to know is that after you summon this you don't need any of this actually as long as you have the interaction entity then you're fine and I think that's pretty obvious. So if someone was in a world, they could then like build around this if they really want to. I doubt someone would do that though. And just by doing that, I've already checked off some things on the list. So that's another thing I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be marking everything and check off with end rods. I guess that's just the best way to do it. I don't know. I just thought it was something kind of random. When I knock stuff off, I'll be marking them here so we can track progress. So here's a little progress update on what I've been doing. I've been adding the functionality of this pressure plate in and setting everything up. So when I stand on here, you're immediately gonna notice one, there's a new team. I'm on a yellow team that is for any active players. Makes it a little easier to detect that. Two, we, we put blocks under that team's scoreboard so it's only displayed on the side when you're in game. We've of course also now placed the first two jumps and there are invisible markers on each one of these jumps that you can't see. This one is next block and that one is the spot where we're going to generate the next jump. There's also a third invisible marker that is placed about right where that bounding block is and that is to mark where we can start clearing blocks because if you look up part of the lobby is still in this line and the very next block over is this gold block so we need to clear gold blocks on and nothing from behind it speaking of which the next thing i've started implementing is actually the falling because here's the thing in the program we want to make sure we get any falling players out first before we generate any new jumps to prevent falling players from generating new jumps. So as soon as I start falling, I will immediately teleport back up. You may notice that my high score just changed to five. That is not actually my high score. I was changing that for debugging purposes. I will have to set that back to 197. But anyway, and so you may notice that no blocks are gone and that's because I was behind this threshold and we weren't clearing any blocks because if I did, we would get rid of the entire lobby. But as soon as I am on this block or anywhere in this area when I fall off the blocks are gone and that's because I was past that point and we can clear all blocks in front of me without having to worry about destroying the lobby which is perfect everything's good so one thing I immediately will notice is there's been times where I've teleported back after falling off and I just went like this I was just like boom and expecting the game to work but I didn't stand on this pressure plate which means that the game didn't start and I started to think that's not the coolest thing to do like this pressure plate was a necessity before I don't need it anymore and I'm thinking of actually removing this and just making it so all players past this point immediately are in the game and all players that walk backwards from this point are just back in the lobby and we could use some detection here so instead of having to stand this pressure plate and being forced to play we'll just be able to run up start playing or you can come back here if you decide not to play another thing i had support for was the checkpoint so if i had a checkpoint like at 100 and i stand on here my block starts at 100 and the idea there being that if different locations are based on your starting block number this will set that which brings up to the next very important thing these gold blocks i have programmed in there to always be gold blocks but if you start at a region that doesn't contain gold blocks should those stay there honestly i think they should is a kind of like remembering of where you did start and you're like entering that section but we can always play with that so far this is where we are at with our board we're making progress so i've been messing around with jumps Obviously, there's some jumps that are super easy, there's some jumps that are a little bit more difficult, and some jumps that are technically possible, but very, very hard, like that one, or that one, especially this one. But I've been trying to categorize this, or think of some way to be able to look at all these, so I did. 
Welcome to my little chart. How this works is that red glass represents block jumps that are either not doable or they're not reasonable or they're not a jump. What that means is this is not a jump, right? You physically can do this without jumping. Same with these blocks and such. This also includes stuff that is like this. Obviously, I cannot jump to this block. It's not doable. Everything behind the player as well is not counted just because I don't want to go backwards. I want everybody to be heading straight forward in the same direction for the entire game. So that's not reasonable. So then the second section is orange. It's technically doable as in either I know it's possible or I've physically done it, but it's either extremely difficult or very niche where it's at a point where I probably shouldn't add it. I think yellow I would consider for the higher difficulty levels of jumps and then green are the ones we're gonna keep so heading back over here everything in this section all what I consider what I want to do all the numbers are here for a reason I'll explain a little bit later but of course all the blocks that are around here I would not consider jumps so this big orange area down here obviously a jump like here is doable it's very doable but the thing about it that makes it in the orange is i don't want to have jumps super far down just to have jumps that go down like we can barely even go up in our current state so if i added a jump like this and you get this one like over and over you'll just drop constantly without really being able to gain any vertical height you have three blocks for a chance of going up so the only block i ended up finding being yellow would be the four blocker because I could consistently do it. It's just a difficult skill. So there's one more block I was considering and adding in this group and it's this one, the five over down two, because it is doable, but only on a single tick, which makes it kind of like the four block, except even more difficult. You get it like one in every 50 try. And I just, I don't think that would be fun to just have in here at random even on the harder difficulties like oh you're jumping along and then you get the one jump that you have a one out of whatever percent chance of jumping to that includes obviously i know the five blocks are doable that's why they're in orange i'm not adding the five block jumps i know it, you would need a run up that is so far out that it's just not reasonable that's the other thing all my jumps have to be possible from only one block meaning if you need this block to get momentum to do this jump then it shouldn't be considered because this block isn't guaranteed to be here this block could be over here and it might be impossible to get momentum for it, especially if this block is like this so if there's like a super sharp turn right getting momentum it's probably possible it's just very difficult and i don't see it as fair that brings me to my next point this is 2d graph and obviously jumps are in 3d so why did i do that well because of the system i mentioned earlier we're putting armor stands at this block facing in 180 different degrees and so these blocks are all one slice of let's say the armor stand was pointing directly forward this is what you would see but if he starts rotating you can literally just take this entire plane and move it over i kind of showed it with this side and that's how the blocks would look but this on the back here highlights an issue that I might see I don't know based on the degree of rotation if this will generate thinking it's a four blocker when in this case it's a four block and two over and that is more difficult than just a four blocker the numbers you see here are the number that needs to be randomly generated for this block to appear so we have one through 15 and they're not in an order you would expect the first four are right here and let me show you why so if we transpose this over to these blocks real quick but these are blocks i would consider ultimately incredibly easy to the point where you don't have to break your momentum or stop moving at all and that's a difficulty level i want to add the like a very easy difficulty where it's only these four and it's more of enjoyable rather than difficult where it's just chill and less skill based because i've had comments before of people saying that they actually really enjoy a map that is easier compared to the difficult side so i'm trying to supply a map for both cases so one through four is what you're gonna get on the easiest mode the next one you're gonna get one through 14 which is all of the green blocks that's your default mode so that goes one two three four and then five six through eight nine ten eleven twelve 
13, 14. And then the last mode, which kind of seems like a cop out, harder difficulty or the hardest is one through 15. And we literally just add this one block. But this one jump after testing all of these seems to be the only one that I feel like, okay, this is difficult. Now, one thing I could change is make it so we don't do 180 degrees for all the jumps. Maybe zero difficulty is like this area. Like, I guess that'd be like 30 on either side. And then the middle difficulty is like 60 on either side. So total 120. And then the hardest difficulty being the full 180. And that way, the more difficult it gets, the quicker turns you might have to make. And that would add to the difficulty. So let me show you what I've done so far. As you can tell, it works. Although it gets kind of interesting. So it works flawlessly, exactly how I told it to do, but how I told it to might be a little troublesome because of that. How the blocks generate is of course based on the direction thing. And I'm not sure if the direction plane that was showing down here, I'm not sure if this is 100% accurate for all directions. What, and what I mean by that is what a jump might be two blocks away facing straight forward might not interpolate exactly as two blocks away in all directions like you think it would because this is this technically two blocks away is it lesser or is it more how does the game round that you know so i think this block might accidentally be causing generations at this level and this is a big no-no because it's not a jump you can walk across this and it's not considered a jump same with if this one's rotated 45 this block or and some of the other ones as well this one is it a case where i should add decimals into the placement that way the rounding prefers the further away block like instead of saying two blocks in front we do like 2.25 in front and that's still technically this block but it in the case of rotation it's now these two instead of this one i i have to look into that i just thought of that right now but who knows um another big thing you'll notice when jumping along is it is very unpredictable and extremely random also sometimes they spawn too close to you and it immediately triggers the next jump another thing is sometimes the turnarounds will generate super close together to the point where it's easier to backtrack than to jump to the technical next block which isn't something i experienced in the last iteration of this okay here so this block generated this guy which generated that one and in theory i could jump to here and jump to there but when you land here and both of these just happen to generate like this like these were right after each other so i jumped here this one was made i jumped here that one was made someone might just assume to go here but that won't work as you see the next block doesn't generate because you have to land here first and then here so that might be an issue where it looks like you can go in more ways that you can Last thing, since we allow blocks to spawn this far down from each other, the two blocks, there's a higher chance of it happening. As you can currently see, well, what is this generation? And so you're more likely to head straight down than up, which could be a problem in a non-void world where the player just goes into the ground or hits bedrock. Like, there's a lot of things that could happen just because the high chance that you're going to be spawning down. I mean, look at that. We've fallen so many blocks. And also, parkour jumps that are two blocks down aren't even that interesting. You're just falling. So I might consider just removing those entirely. Those are what I'm at right now, the fixes I have to do. Right now, I'm just setting these to gold blocks as default. But of course, if I add the system to do all the decoration, that would be different. All right, so I've done some pretty big changes to the parkour. A lot of it has just been me trying to figure out issues where I would have jumps that just didn't seem possible. So I've had to limit a few things that I think are for the better of the game entirely. So first off, the direction we summon in is not all 180 degrees anymore. And instead it looks something a bit like this. So I went in and I tested from this position here all 90 degrees to see when blocks change and as you can see here well i didn't do all 90 i did every five and i just try to see which ones lined up and these ones are all separate so there was no reason to test from numbers zero all the way through five and possibly even through nine because they're all the same block at this distance now of course the further you go out the bigger the difference direction makes but if this is our farthest out block 
then there is no reason why we should add more degrees for these further blocks because we're never gonna use them. I just chose whatever number I felt like doing. So I did zero, I did 10 for this one, did 20 for this one. And then here comes another interesting case. You see the blocks generate in front and behind for different degrees. So even though this is a four block jump, like this, you can get either an easier version or a way harder version of the same jump. And in this case, this jump is, I believe, might be impossible compared to this one, or this corner, or this corner. So, what I ended up doing is I would go from 20 straight to 40, straight to 50, and then over to 70. I avoid these three entirely for all jumps, not, even ju not just a four block jump. That's just because these blocks over here, they're not doable jumps. And then we did at one point go from this block, which was 85 to 90, and this was directly to the right or directly to the left of this block. But I had to remove these jumps as well because there were small cases in which this block would generate and it would generate its next block in the exact same position as the first one and it actually happened a lot more often than you'd think like i would generate like 100 blocks or so and like i'd either end on one that was like that or there'd be like another case where you had like two of them and so that was another issue so the one problem i did talk to you about earlier is i would have blocks generate like this close or this close because they're trying to make this block and i fixed this by going to 0.35 blocks in front of this block, which means instead of generating here, I think it was generating here, but then when it rotates, it's that block instead, or at least some variant of that where it's preferring the further out blocks compared to the closer ones. So I believe I've removed all possible generations of these two. I'm not entirely sure, but I've ran it through multiple hundreds of jumps and I've seen those gone. And one important distinction is I have that number higher for closer blocks, but once you get to the four ranges, I actually lower it to 4.25 instead of 0.35. And that is to reduce the chances that we get these from generating because I was still able to get small cases where this was happening from a close angle. Another key part that was causing issues where too far away blocks were spawning was because of the marker itself. Itself. This is a really deep rooted issue and I'm so happy I figured it out earlier But to basically explain it is I was doing all my tests from the very center of the block And that wasn't always the case with some of my markers Sometimes the markers were as far off as like this place or this place on the block which is such a big difference when we're talking about the decimal places like remember i was using 4.35 as an example that's so far that changes like that compared to this are big enough to where it would cause too far away of blocks to generate so i was scouring the internet for fixes and i found this align so execute has a very underused command called align which i didn't even think about doing which forces the command to round your x y and z to be perfect whole numbers which means that you can perfectly place yourself on a corner which is exactly what i needed now you're probably wondering you didn't say you wanted it on the corner of the block you said you wanted it to be in the very center because that's where you did all your tests from and that's the mathematical correct way to do it well adding 0.5s like i just did does place you into the center and that lets me do everything now because of the way that i have programmed everything up there the goal was to make everything in relative commands so that you could place this anywhere in the world and it would always work right and so the thing was that everything was generating based on me throwing this diamond in so the offset of where you threw it in the fire is what placed the mark Marker that teleports you up here which then place the markers that spawn over here and would place all of the next markers that you would encounter while parkouring which means that the offset was occurring as far back as that first diamond I threw that means yes if you technically threw the diamond further away from the center you could cause your entire parkour to be more difficult which obviously is a huge problem and I'm so happy that the align part of the execute command exists because that fixed everything it's just such a useful niche case that i just thought the game wouldn't have and i found it and i used it on this as well that's why this is now a block further down is because i'm aligning this to be in the center of the block which honestly looks better in my opinion it's more visible when you 
throw it in the fire the first place to see the text appear rather than having to look upwards and seeing it above you. All right, so here's what our main board looks like now with everything I've done today. Big tackle in this area. I will have to come back to do a few things later. I will be uh, touching the decorations next time because this is where I'm ending the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like the video, hit the like button so I know that you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you want to know when I upload the next part or any of my videos and leave a comment below with a suggestion you know try to get your name on the board down there i try to look at as many as i can and if i find something that seems to fit really well i'll think it over for a while and decide if i should put it on the board next time we'll work on adding the decorations back as well as any new ones because this is really uh bland in the current state but anyway guys i'll see you next time peace